After surviving a chaotic start in the city, you find it. The ultimate base location. You spend days meticulously defending it for the worst case scenario. A true piece of post-apocalyptic art. And then... Nothing. Not a single zombie in sight. Just you and the wind. This is one problem some players have with Project Zomboid's progression system. So today, I decided to take it upon myself to truly make home defense something critical for your survival. By installing the Horde Knight mod, which adds an event every week where a massive group of zombies attacks you. And with every event survived, the zombie count increases to truly test your survival and base. The goal is quite simple. Survive 50 days fighting off and defending each and every horde event, which drops every seventh day. We have the mods and the plan. Now it's time to see if I can truly make it. What you're about to see right now is either going to be one of the most action-packed series I've done, or a very depressing run where I get ripped apart immediately. There's no in-between. Anyways, welcome everyone to Project Zomboid. And today, we are joined by Ryan Howard who's hopefully going to have enough skills and wit to survive this challenge, which is a solid 50 days or 7 Horde Nights. I'm not going to go very in-depth about the character creation, but if you were to care, I would have it in the description below. The main things is that he's an engineer who's a little bit out of shape and a good shot. About four levels deep. And there's also a very important reason on why I mentioned out of shape. Because I am currently playing on the random zombie setting, which means about 30% of the zombie population are going to be sprinters. So this is definitely not the challenge to where I can just outmaneuver and outperform the zombies with combat. If I'm gonna get into a fight, we're gonna have to think through with it, and we're hopefully gonna have to rely on weapons as a result. Anyways, we have spawned in the middle of Rosewood, and right now my main goal is to get one, a bag, two, a decent place to rest up, three, a car, and as soon as that happens, we can actually look for a basic grocery list of supplies that we'll need. Before any of that though, we need to focus on the survival now. So we're gonna look around our house to see if we can find anything that would help me survive. Which includes a, a, a few books, I guess. Some chocolate and sugar, a nice meat cleaver, which is a perfect weapon, some extra milk, hand tuna, an alarm clock to tell the time, including a pen and pencil. Okay, that's it here. All we have to our name is a single weapon, and obviously the game decides to throw me in first thing in the thickest fog I've ever seen. That's not good. The only solace that I can have with me is the fact that there are a lot of low fences nearby. So right now, my plan is to maneuver around very quietly down these homes here, the rich homes, maybe looting a couple garages on the way, so I can hop into the back of the fire station, hop the fence, clear out the fire station, get better weapons, and then we can work towards finding a bag. Yeah. That's going to be our only chance right now. So we're going to crouch down and we're going to take our sweet old time. Oh, please help me. This fog is going to get me killed. We're also going to be looting a lot of the shacks and garages on the way for hammers, nails, anything of that sort, really. And bam, we got ourselves three hammers. Good for weapons, good for tools. And on top of that, a nice dust mask and a propane tank. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's keep on moving. I'll let you know if I get murdered. Oh my lord, this is the worst combination I've ever felt in my life. Sprinters on their own are bad, but when you can't see anything in the fog, it makes it ten times worse. We also got ourselves an empty gas can, which is perfect for future gas siphoning, post-apocalyptic nights, a, a, an empty bottle, and outside, I think we have a couple of zombies we might have to dispatch. Oh my... You scared the crap out of me. I'm gonna open the door for you, okay? And then we can we, we can settle this fully. And by settle this, I mean I'm gonna do an old loop-de-loop -loop and pull, taking out the first zombie. Okay, this room is filled with zombies. I'm actually gonna go leave out the side and use the fence line for the rest of these idiots. 
<laughs> Mondays, am I right? Holy crap. It looks like the first house I went ahead and looted was obviously a meta event that was filled to the brim with zombies. That's all right, though, because now I can actually look around. Oh, I also forgot to mention we did spawn in with a couple of nice things, being an engineer and all. We got ourselves a handy dandy toolbox with a screwdriver, some scrap electronics, and glue. It's all kind of useless, including the two pound uh, toolbox, but it is a nice start because a screwdriver can get you a whole bunch of stuff. But we also have ourselves a another meat cleaver, which I will take a bunch of beer and sodas on the floor. We'll take the sodas, not the wine, because that weighs a lot. We also got ourselves a nice broom. A small little dinner meal here. A nice hand torch, which I will take for the future. And lastly, we got ourselves a M1911 with a full magazine and a box of ammo. Now, if I were an idiot, I would use this immediately to shoot and get myself killed. But me knowing how well that would end with sprinters, I'm instead gonna load it and save it for a rainy day, AKA a future turret. That's right, with this mod pack that I have, we can actually go ahead and craft up bop 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 turrets that automatically shoot down zombies without any of my intervention. And all we need for it is a pipe wrench or a wrench, a pistol like the Colt 1911, three scrap electronics, three metal scrap, and a motion sensor, and we will have ourselves the equivalent of a tower defense extra guard, right? Which is very cool. Another very cool thing is that I'm running the crosshair mod again, but this time it's a little bit different because now I can actually crouch down to increase my accuracy as well. And it looks very cool when you get your hands on like a full on assault rifle and you start gunning them down in that pose. It's the ultimate trip, but we're still a far cry away from that right now. We are at the bottom of the food chain. Anyways, now that we have cleared out this back area, all we need to do is follow the fence lines right down to that corner so we can hop on over and see what the fire station has in store for me. How bad does it look? Not that bad. There is a small group of four zombies over there, but if I play my cards correct, what I can do is lead them out single file, one on one, and kill them before they become a threat. What really is a threat to me and my survival is when zombies start to, let's say, group up as sprinters in a massive, you know, ball of flesh. That's when I need to worry. One on one, sprinters, they're nothing. See? What did I say? No problems at all. That is until the fact that I open a door and inadvertently let like eight zombies rip me apart at once. But that won't happen for at least another three episodes. Please don't actually let that happen in another three episodes. I'd be devastated. <laughs> On top of that, these nice firefighters have some military boots and digital watches, which I really want. For one, we can scrap those up into electronic scrap to make future turrets, and two, the stomping damage is going to help me out tremendously. There's no more zombies down here though, other than that massive group there with an extra duffel bag. I'm gonna remember that if there's no bags in here. And now we can loot around the fire station which should hopefully have a bunch of tools and supplies to help me survive. Please don't let there be a zombie on the other side of this window. Oh, we're good. Okay, let's clear out the area first and then we can begin looting. And I think that's gonna be all of them. By the way, if you're wondering my strategy to clear out this place, I like to employ the idea of creating a ruckus inside a a decently fortified room where I have the advantage instead of going up blind spots like those stairs there, right? Because it'd be very easy for there to be like three sprinters on the top floor without me knowing. And the only way that I would figure it out is if I walked up myself and got ripped apart. So instead, what I like to do when I'm playing things extremely calm is to move into, let's say, a building with, or a room, sorry, with a lot of windows here, so I can smash one, attract all of the zombies into the location, and then use window cheese to kill the zombies rightfully. Because that is the safe way. And Ryan Howard 
is a smart man. I'm also not the best fighter when it comes to melee, so any small advantage I can get is gonna be nice. Yeah, no, we're looking safe, so let's start with the locker room and then we can move our way down. We got ourselves a lumberjack shirt, just a bunch of random belts, kind of useless. I guess I'll take the firefighter helmet though. We also got ourselves a bunch of food and supplies. We got tools on the shelves, equipment inside the lockers, and weapons inside the storerooms. So on the shelves we have a metal saw, a metal pipe wrench, a shovel, you know what, that shovel's gonna be the best weapon I have right now. Holy crap, the saw already is huge. An empty gas can, even better. A couple more pipe wrenches, a ball peen hammer, a flashlight, and inside the actual tool room, we got ourselves a road cone, some firefighter gear. Uh, I was really expecting some axes. Okay, we got ourselves a singular axe. And as much as I would love to use that as a weapon, we're gonna save that for chopping down trees. Damn, dude, I'm actually- Oh, okay, we got ourselves another hand axe as well. Inside here, we got just a bunch of... Just a bunch of medical supplies. I guess I'll take myself a nice disposable mask. Okay, not the best, but this is gonna be the best place for our base. So what I'm gonna do is drop off all of the stuff that's not very needed with me right now. And we are gonna go fight that zombie horde with the duffel bag, because I really need one of those. And I also want to make this my impromptu base, because I have plans of actually defending this construction lot right down here. It's surrounded by a fence, and it has one choke point, which is gonna be perfect for horde management. The only problem is that I need a lot of supplies and tools, and I'm not about to lug them back on foot. So up next, what we need to find ourselves is a bag, which I will fight that massive horde down there with, using the windows of course. And two, we need ourselves a vehicle. If I can get myself a vehicle, we are going to be chilling. Absolutely chilling. The only problem is that it's kind of up to chance, but I do have a very good route for it. For one, we can check in front of the fire station. Two, we can check at the police station. And three, if we follow the back of the, I guess, city hall, there's gonna be a massive parking lot here in which I hope we'll have a better chance. So I am going to remove the glass inside these two windows here, setting up a table at the front door, and then we can, you know, bring in the zombies. And the only reason why I'm doing this, by the way, is to have a fallback point from the window, so I won't get overrun too bad. And that's exactly why we take our time. Not a single wound to my name, and a bunch of dead zombies, including a free duffel bag. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta love it when a plan comes together. Now that we do have this duffel bag, it's time to look for my dream car, which is not that. Those two down there, though, are looking pretty promising. We'll keep an eye out for any keys in the parking lots, or keys in the ignition. After that, it's as simple as finding a single vehicle with gasoline, and we will be off to the races. By the way, this is still only the first day. So after today, we still got ourselves another six to go through. You know what I mean? Anyways, let's not get our hopes too. Oh, there's a lot of zombies here. Yeah, that's exactly why we don't get our hopes up. I'm gonna kill those three zombies down there, and I think we're gonna start to use the fence line. No, it's just... We'll bring him in one-on-one, -on -one, okay? We'll just have a repeat of last time. Worst case scenario, we just gotta loop around and use the windows that we've made before. Holy crap, is it also satisfying to bash in some random dude's head with a shovel. In Project Zomboid. Okay, I may have bitten off a bit more than I can chew. We're gonna be fine, though. We win these. I feel so... I, I, it feels good to be back, though. I gotta say. It feels great. <laughs> Just gotta watch my back and slowly snake these idiots around. Avoiding the walker, which is honestly the biggest threat right now because of how slow she is. Bam. Boom. Jump over. Bada bingo. Dodge that. Yeah, they're done. You two are done to me. <laughs> Holy crap. 
I gotta say, if, if you really want to get good against sprinters, if you know how to use the fence lines to your advantage, the world is your the world is your oyster, you know what I mean? Holy crap. Okay, now that we have taken care of those seven idiots, there's another seven to take care of, or more like eight, but we'll take care of them after we check these two beautiful vehicles here. A locked car with no keys or no gas. The red one, however, has none of that either. Why am I not surprised? Well, it does have gasoline. About 1 19th filled up as well. I mean, beggars really can't be choosers. I was really hoping I would have gotten lucky here. That's fine. There's what, eight zombies here to take care of? There's probably gonna be three to four sprinters maximum. We're definitely not gonna be able to clean out the police station today, but we can put a pretty big dent in their number. So for the rest of the day, let's show these zombies who's the real champ. It's me, it's Ryan. <laughs> Welcome to day two. That means we have six days left to prepare. And with Ryan Howard being wakeful, we actually woke up at about 4 a.m., which really isn't a good time. Though we can still see decently out in the darkness because I did take cat eyes. So I think instead of wasting our time just lounging around indoors until it's bright out, we hit the ground running today and finish what we started. The street lamps are still on, so it's still pretty easy to see around the area. Yeah, we'll be all right. This is, this is nothing for me. So yeah, let's clear out the outside with the two zombies, that group there near the side entrance, and then we can clear out the inside. We're saving the armory until we get a car or maybe next episode, and then hopefully we find our dream car. Okay, come on idiots, one at a time please. That is not one at a time, that is like 20 at a time. It's a good thing we got this fence line here. What was that? Um, okay, that was a little bit weird. Uh, I, I was doing my normal fence cheese, and for some reason that zombie was actually able to hit me through the... through the fence line. Okay, that's terrifying. Well, we are also anemic, so we're bleeding out extremely quick, but that's not an actual zombie scratch, so I'm not worried about infection at all. That was, I fell on barbed wire after a zombie uh, tried to grab my ankles type of fall. Wow, what the hell was that? That kind of makes me terrified because the amount of times like a zombie lunges at me and the times that I just dodge it by hopping the fence are pretty high. Well, I guess that just means I need to take my time and really make sure that I'm hitting them where it hurts when I do this fence maneuver. Now that's the kind of silence I like to hear. Okay, that was extremely rough, but now things are a lot more digestible. Four more idiots to go. Now it's time to dunk on all of the indoor idiots, making sure we have an easy way of escape if I do get jumped inside here. It looks like there's not too many, but uh, images can be very deceiving with Project Zomboid. <laughs> uh, hello there, police officer. D uh, goodbye, police officer. I also hear another zombie down there. Okay, they're not too much of a threat right now, though. Oh, that was a smashed window. Down here, it looks clear. No one inside that room there. Okay, I think we're pretty much clear inside this place. Now, sir, or ma'am, do you have a, a a set of keys that I might be able to use to access your armory? She does. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not only that, but she has a free bulletproof vest and a decent police deputy jacket as well. It does slow me down, but it's only by 7%. And already, we're not much of a runner, okay? If Howard gets jumped by a bunch of sprinters in the middle of a field, it's basically game over for me. 
So having a little bit of, you know, extra protection does go a long way. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna go check out the locker room. I'm still gonna save the armory for next episode because I, I just, I like to save that kind of stuff, you know? But I do wanna see if there's any extra bags in here. We got a satchel, face mask, yada yada. A bell, even more face masks, a helmet, and nothing. Okay, never mind. All we got is yogurt. And if you're wondering, no, I'm not gonna be looting the armory yet, mostly because I want to save it as a nice little treat for me finding a vehicle. But yes, I do want to find a vehicle before I loot the armory, so that way I have a way to lug all of my junk from point A to point B. Matter of fact, let me mark down where my base is going to be. Right here. It's surrounded by a fence line, it has one entrance, like, right there, and it's perfect for a Horde Knight challenge run, because all I need to do is reinforce the front with turrets, spike traps, spike pits, spikes, barricades, and we will be cooking with some real gasoline. There is also nothing inside the mini-fridge and in the desks. There's some aviator glasses, <laughs> I don't mind if I do. Uh, some cigarettes, which I always love, a holster, pens, lighters, and one extra lighter for good effect. Okay, I'm actually not gonna go out this way because I don't really like the door being surrounded by no windows whatsoever. I'm gonna go out and around and we're gonna see what kind of vehicles we got. Hopefully, ones that I'll be able to work with. Okay, we got ourselves Oh my. Hold on, sir. I'm gonna have to bash your brains in really quick. <laughs> we got ourselves two very nice, three very nice vehicles. If you look at them, I think they're survivor vehicles. I mean, the police station, I mean, not the police station. The police car looks in perfect working order. And the same thing goes for that Chevalier wagon. Look at that. No, 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 I, I'm betting these are these are survivor vehicles, no doubt about it. Now the question, do they- Oh, I see you right there, you little, you little goober. Okay, I think we might be cooking with some real sauce here. What is it to? The, the Chevalier wagon. Okay, so it looks like we found our car. Now, of course, I would much rather prefer the police car, so we're gonna check this. It's locked. That's fine, though. Let's go check this. It, it, it opens, we got ourselves Wasteland Warriors, and it's filled with gas. Ha! <laughs> you can't, you, you can't get it any better than that. And that allows me to raid the police station next episode. Anyways, I think I'm gonna end it here. We got a lot to look forward to. This police car also probably has some good stuff in it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go loot it really quick. And inside, we got ourselves an extra box of ammo and even more ammo. Not bad at all. But yeah, I'm gonna save all of the cool stuff for next episode. For now, Ryan has survived for 23 hours marking his first... Mark... Just about marking his first day alive, killing 66 zombies as well. Anyways, if you guys have liked this episode, be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more as we make our way to grab all of the cool stuff and to finally... Build out my awesome super mega survival base. I'll see all of you next time. Peace out, everyone.